Right, John Duggan's here with us, as you can see. John, how are you? Ger and Owen, good morning. We're, um, so you had a great chat with them, right? I, let's generally just, let's, let's generally I do, though. Generally I do. Shut up. A good chat. <laughs> uh, I had a terrible chat with them. Owen had an okay chat with them. Um, Even? Why don't you listen to me? I, no, I lost, <laughs> I lost pretty much of my uh, food uh, allotment for the week. Uh, I couldn't you recovered, you recovered. I you you look, for, look, for a month. You know, you look like you've regained your strength. I had a bad first day and, and basically had no money left to win it back over the course of the rest of the week. So, entry is an opportunity, entry and punch down are the final few yes. opportunities for the um, National Hunt Lovers of the Year to get their teeth stuck into some good quality racing. And it's good quality racing today. It is, yeah. Uh, the fact that it's tr truncated into three days as well, you don't have a dud day. I think Cheltenham on the Thursday can be a little bit weak um, uh, and also weak for your pocket. Ah, oh, disaster. Uh, yeah, it's just the, the Thursday, I'm going to looking at the Gold Cup winner to get me out of jail. But, um, uh, yeah, it's just, as, as, as I think JB McManus once said, like, there's always another day in racing, you know, so even if you had a bad Cheltenham, there's Aintree, there's Punchestown, there's Ferry House as well. So, you know, there's always a uh, reason to be optimistic about a, a, gr a great, you know, card at Aintree today. Uh, the Grand National Median, of course, the big race on Saturday at 5.15, the most famous race we all watch as, a, as, as kids. Uh, and really, like, top racing today, we've got four grade one contests. Uh, probably the feature is the Aintree Hurdle at 3.25. Uh, Ruby Walsh and Fahin, Mellon second in the champion hurdle, Bou Verder, uh, former champion hurdle winner who fell at Cheltenham, all these uh, like household names regarding uh, horse racing. So there's nine in the field, uh, that's like probably the biggest race, and then there's another really good race as well, the Betway Bowl at uh, 250, you've got Clan des the King George winner, Elegant Escape, the Welsh National winner, and then a couple of Irish horses that are really well fancied, Kenboy, Ruby Walsh, a lot of money for him this morning into 9-4, to four. wrote respect for Noel Mead, a winner of a big race at Leopardstown a while back in Bristol to Mai, who was third in the Gold Cup. So this is this is just great stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, Band of Outlaws is running for Joseph O'Brien. That's right, yeah. Hurdle. Um, we got the race over the over the actual national fences. So we got a taste of what the ground is like, and you know, and all the carnage that you get in, in this. And it's obviously a lot safer the fences now than they used to be. But twenty seven runners in the Fox Hunters Chase. That'll be fun. Yeah, so I'm staying away from that one. <laughs> Are you getting involved in anything today, or is um, I'm I'm doing I'm, I'm doing a bit of lane. Um, which is a kind of a, maybe a specialist thing that I don't know if people understand uh, for the audience, but um, where you actually go onto an exchange and you take bets, so you actually oppose an outcome. So you know there might be a horse at ten to one, you might take a tenner on that. You be the bookmaker, effectively. You take the tenner on it. Now, if the horse wins, you owe a hundred quid. But you know, if any other horse wins, it doesn't matter which other horse you wins. You get the field. You, you get you get the field. You get the tenner minus commission. It's an exchange between backer and layer. I'll be doing a bit of that at entry today with horses. I don't fancy because there's horses. I don't fancy here, but obviously that's not what the listeners want or the audience want well, today. Who, who, just as a matter of interest, who, who are you opposing? I'm opposing Spirit of the Games in the first race because I don't think he's got the class to win. I'm opposing uh, Super Sunday because I think he's gone off the boil in that uh, entry hurdle. And I could get caught and I could be uh, coming in here broke and l l lost all the Chatham stuff. But generally, I'll be quite selective. Elegant Escape doesn't have the class for me to win the. So, as I said before, uh, when we've talked racing, a process of elimination. And if you see something that stands out, then you generally feel, you know what? If it stands out for you, then you know it's probably worth the bet. And even if it stands out for you in a 27-runner race, it might be worth an each-way bet. Okay. Uh, so what does stand out for me today? In the 5.15, this is the last race, Minella Melody. Manella Melody. Henry de Bram had had a Manella that won at Cheltenham for Rachel Blackmore at 50 to 1. This ra uh, race, though, has uh, produced this favourite. Patrick Mullins rides, a friend of Off the Ball, 11 to 4. Manella Melody, really uh, highly regarded in the point to point ranks. One or two races uh, very easily. And uh, I think she could be something special. On the ratings, she's highly ahead of these on the ratings with the Racing Post um, conduct. So Manella Melody, I think, has got a big chance in that mare's race, that the 515. And a couple of each way bets uh, in that Fox Hunters. Road to Riches was third in the Gold Cup a few years ago. Of course, he's an older horse now. He is not as good as he was, but if, if he showed some of his old sparkle, he was sixth in the Grand National last year. This is a race of horses. A lot of them are older horses. A lot of them have kind of transferred out of ownership. Uh, Road to Riches used to be owned by Michael O'Leary, now owned by somebody else. Uh, I think David Maxwell, who actually rides the horse. He's 25 to 1, Road to Riches. I thought he was one that stood out each way in the Fox Hunters chase. Um, and also, Paul Nichols, who's kind of back to form in the last few years, has got Diego de Charmille, the top one in the two-mile Red Rum Handicap Chase at 8-1. to one. I think he's a cracking each way bet to nothing. He won a grade one race over course and distance at the festival 
at Aintree last year. Uh, he's been very fresh, he's been put away for this. Now he does have top weight, Diego de Charmille, but I think that I can definitely see him reaching the frame because I think he's got a lot of class. And what kind of price? Sorry, that goes to post at 440. What? 8 to 1. Okay. 8 to 1 each way, road to riches each way, Manella, Melody to win. The other races, the big races, I think Bouverdeur will probably win. Uh, the entry hurdle. I'm looking at Kenboy. I think the money is significant, and that Ruby rides. Ruby hasn't ridden a horse in quite a long time. Um, you know, Bristol de Mai can be in and out. Clande Zobo might be going better uh, right handed. Um, in the other races, the Juvenile hurdle, Band of Outlaws, Pentland Hills. Ugh, like, you know, it's hard to choose between them. I'm generally wary of four year old races, the juvenile races. Sometimes the form, you can get funny results at Aintree after Cheltenham. It doesn't always translate. And the opening race, uh, Le Bagawa, uh, that won for. Uh, Warren Great Tricks at Leopardstown, a great jumper, she'll try and jump them into submission. But there's some good horses in the race as well, Kalashnikov, Mengli Khan, who Johnny Ward doesn't really like, uh, but if it's a going day, he could be an each way bet at 8-1, to one. Glenn Forza, not a race I want to have a bet in, so the ones that, you know, I've suggested are the ones to have a bet in, but what I'll do is I'll do a blog and I'll put it up on offtheball.com. Okay, so um, there is definitely some lessons to be learned from people who recognise a horse that they backed at Cheltenham, and then they're like, okay, I'm going to ride it out with this through Aintree and Punchestown, not the case. Don't just back no. on, the, on the fact that some no. horses are produced for Cheltenham. Exactly. Others are actually produced for this because yeah. they've had a setback earlier in the season. You go, okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna try and make Cheltenham our be all and end all because we know we're not gonna be ready for it. Sometimes it can just be a pr preparation run. Although it's Cheltenham and that sounds stupid, but it does happen in some cases. Yeah. So Kenboy fell at the first at the in the Gold Cup. So you can completely wipe that out. So that what means Kenboy is a fresher horse than he would have been if he'd run in the Gold Cup over three and a quarter miles, maybe finish fourth or fifth, right, on soft ground. Um, also, the tracks are very different. Cheltenham is undulating, undulating, hilly track. Aintree is a flat, speedy track. So Le Bagawa, the trainer Warren Gray, Gray Trex thinks this horse is not suited to Cheltenham. I'm going to put her away for Aintree. That to me is a significant positive in her favour. Also, the form, she beat top of the game in Santini at Campton at Christmas. They both were first and second at Cheltenham. That's a very positive sign for her chances at about 7-4 to four, La Bagawa, whether the distance... Very short, isn't it? It is short, it is short, but you know, like once again, we, we, we're speaking to people on Off the Ball on Friday Night Racing all through the year about peaking for Cheltenham uh, so if you're seeing horses that have bypassed the festival, um, that's all, sometimes a very, a very positive sign uh, but also, you don't know what the mark has been left by Cheltenham uh, on certain horses and that, that's why you I want to be a little bit cautious on the first day of entry see how the results pan out and that's why I'm kind of interested in horses uh, like that horse at the end race Manella Melody who would have bypassed this and would have been aimed at this mare's race uh, also Diego de Charmille did not run at Cheltenham Alright, John, good stuff. That uh, blog going up on Off the Ball a little bit later on. Um, Owen, are you doing your uh, tipster, tip of the tipsters poll of poster, Frank Luntz? Well, considering I haven't eaten in a month, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to follow John Duggan this week. No, you, <laughs> we're, not, we're not asking you to expect you to gamble, just to do the work. That's all. People, people, <laughs> just do the work, Owen. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, you've, you've set a very high bar for yourself. Uh, Chris Cook had a good, uh, had a good chat. I have the Guardian in front of me. I wonder, does he have uh, anything in here? I'm saying that now out in the limb, that he, he might do. You'd imagine that the Guardian would be covering uh, entry. Nobody uh, else did that. I didn't see that anywhere else. So Greg Woods, uh, I meant to say. Um, his uh, tips today, Glenn Forza, Band of Outlaws, Clan des Oboe as his Napa today, Boover Dare, Road to Rome. Lady Buttons is his next best, and Manella Melody. Way! Right, we've got a know. tipster table going on. Manella Melody. We've got a, we've got a, we've got a match. We've got a match. I'm going to eat this week. <laughs>